Hello and welcome to day two of the dry fast. This is a live stream for frequently asked questions. So people that are joining the group can actually ask questions about the biology of a dry fast and what's going on during it. Um, just to kind of like calm the psychology down. So that's pretty much how it's going. Sorry, the music is a little too loud right now. Hey Alexa, turn volume down. Um, so, so pretty much this is day two and day two is not fun. You go into ketosis on day two and it's, it's pretty much a tiring um, experience because your liver is actually processing glycogen. It's converting glycogen into glucose and putting it into the bloodstream. And so that, that process is not fun. It makes you tired in that transition. The body doesn't really want to transition into different energy sources. It's chill. It's cool where it's at and it has like a surplus of glycogen stores, your body's basically your survival vessel. Um, even your heart slows down when it realizes that no more food's coming in. It's like, okay, we're, we're getting into a state where, um, we're getting to a state where we need to actually go into survival mode. He may be stuck somewhere, you know, and they're kind of just communicating to whatever you're consciously doing. Because it's very likely that we can go through a drought in more ways than one. We can have no food. It's best to kind of like, understand what to do during those environments you know so at the end of the day what ends up happening is like you should be transitioning to understanding how to utilize your body to fasting and trusting the body for the through long stints of not eating and also being able to grow food and vegetation that's pretty much what this whole experience is and that's where i'm transitioning to i want to buy land in costa rica to grow food and and heal people so if anybody has cancer or tumor, anybody who's like really desperate to heal, I'll be like, okay, we'll come over to my house. Let's get this done and uh, be on your way. Flap about into the world with a, a higher vibration. And that's kind of like how it works. And I was thinking about that. Like, you know how like a, a, an animal doesn't want to be like uh, healed or like cured by a human. We take him into a vet. We take the pricker out of its paw and it's like, don't touch me, don't touch me. And you take it out of its paw and all of a sudden it's like very energetic and excited and happy afterwards. So like that's what kind of starvation is like fasting it's you you pretty much putting your body into a compromised state and then when it's done with the job you can flourish and be happy and blossom again it's like really happy sometimes people's minds are not caught up with that uh reality yet so they're kind of a little lagging on on just like the perception of of just it's not fun it's 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 a fasting dry fasting just to kind of let you know it's like day four day five even right now in day two it's like subtle subtle suffering um, so it's just kind of like mind over matter. How do you enjoy this? Like I'm a person that doesn't eat or drink. It's different like mantras that mean a lot to you. So for instance, the sun, like sunsets and sunrises are like a, a must if you're gonna go very far. And cause it kind of like tunes you out. It realizes that like, oh, earth and the sun are here for me. They're here for my healing. And how beautiful is this life? It's, it's inexplicable until you really do it. Um, and so, so yeah, I'm kind of ranting right now. <laughs> but anyway, like day two is what we're going through right now. Congratulations to those who've made it to day two for the first time in their lives. It's a very tremendous foundation you've actually created because now day two can turn into day three. And now you have the, the medicine, you have the tool, the medicine's autophagy. Autophagy is self-cannibalism. You're, you're eating it yourself. You're drinking your own fat stores. You're eating any proteins that are not favorable to the host. You're eating parasites even. So you're, you're, you have this tool now to heal whatever you want to do and you can teach others how to do it as well. Um, but it's a hardcore pursuit. You know, sometimes people come to me like, hey, I wanna heal this and hear that. Like, I always tell them like you, you it, the answer is there, the cure is there, but the, the undertaking is, is pretty hardcore. You have to go pretty hard um, core to do it, a very, um, very deep path. What's up, Melissaad? Good to see you, Camila. And somebody else said hi before to Jakob Wenham. I blast through these live streams because like, I feel like time, time is valuable to you guys and I wanna have every single sentence be very dense with information. <laughs> and nowadays, uh, Instagram, the new update, made it so live streams can only be an hour. And I always think I'm gonna do like 20 minutes, but it always ends up being longer because I'm always uh, just really passionate. Uh, I'm very passionate about this. You know, even today I went on the boat with my brother and he's like, oh, like he's so used to me like uh, fasting that he just, he doesn't, he's not shocked at all by it. So he, he doesn't even offer me anything, but he tempts me with things, you know? So <laughs> he tempts me with like juices and water and like, he's like, here's an orange. You want an orange, right? And I'm like, once I'm fasting, like once no food, that's why people think dry fasting is easier than water fasting because it's such a simple concept. There's no rules at all. The rule is pretty much just don't eat or put anything in your mouth, not even liquid. 
So it's like, hmm, that, they made it very easy. I can't even put like any, so I, you, it's easy to say no to everything is what I'm trying to say. Um, so kind of to tell people what's happening on day two briefly, um, cause I know most of you guys are not fasting right now. You're just watching my crazy ass uh, that looks like a homeless person with my long blonde hair now um, talk about starvation. And uh, I call it starvation because I kind of like to almost mock it in a way because people are going to give me a hard time about fasting anyway. And who cares? Yeah, you are starving yourself, but it's a, um, a hormetic process where you, you're you inducing a stressor into the body in order to gain from it, just like exercise. So that's what that's what it is. It's not like you die. You, you actually... You, you actually prioritize healing in a way. So like, how far can you survive? You know, I, I didn't know. And it was kind of fun for my journey. I was like, how, how far can I really drive fast? Because I knew no one who was going that long. And that's what made me feel like I was in a simulation. I was like, why has no one done this? <laughs> Am I stupid? Like, what? because I was like, but the thing is you're, you're confirmed, you're approved of your beliefs because like, oh, I can go farther and no one's done this. And therefore my symptoms are going down very drastically. Man, there's something here. So imagine, imagine uncovering that in your life and being like, wow, like I, I figured something out that no one's figured out yet. Well, people have figured it out, but the information has been like either burned or suppressed or deleted. Um, and it's just a reawakening every single 500 to 1,000 years. Here's another crazy person who's teaching people how to heal their bodies. And, uh, and so like I ended up going to like day, I thought day nine was actually, um, I thought day 11 was the cap. No one passed past day 11. Eventually I found literature that, that kind of confirmed that. And then I was like, okay, well, I'm going beyond day 11 and day 12. And the reason why I did is because my symptoms were exacerbated by day 11. They weren't done. It's not like I cured myself. It was actually peaking. It was like the detach, um, detaching process was, ha was happening at that point. And I'm kind of a spiritual person, so I think it was like a, a gnashing of teeth. So the parasites were like gnashing their teeth before the final um, fatality, um, if you want to call it that. So... And then eventually like day 12 was even sometimes a little bit more hardcore. And that's when I was like, mm, I'm gonna break, you know? So I broke a lot of those fast prematurely. So I was like, mm, what is this? But I'd always take pictures and journal. And the reason I was able to see the symptoms be exacerbated because I was actually doing ozone therapy, cupping ozone therapy on my skin at the same time I was doing dry fasts. So that was kind of giving me the answers on the test. And who doesn't want the answers on the test while you're taking a damn test? Um, so I was able to see something that most people haven't ever done. They've never combined ozone therapy with dry fasting. So I was able to see how far along with the download process I was. That's That was the aha moment. That was the, the and I don't care that like, even me telling you this is kind of like <laughs> thinking the entrepreneur version of me is like, hmm, they're, they're gonna have this information now. Now you can, you can, you know, <laughs> it's like some the part of me kind of wants it to myself. So I'm, I feel special, but like, uh, that's really it. Like, so I, f I found it with the ozone therapy and the dry fasting. Then I, so I was like, thank God I don't have to do the ozone therapy anymore because it's so hardcore and it's making me look like a crazy person. So, um, I was like traveling the world and not really, I didn't have a home. I was just staying in Airbnbs and trading commodities. Um, on my laptop, like high frequency trading. I do this in like coffee shops and just kind of get water and juice and just trade. And I was still doing ozone therapy in my face. And uh, and so eventually like, <laughs> it, it was rashing out everywhere, like on my neck, my head, my, my face. It, it wasn't attractive at all. So like obviously my dating life was completely annihilated. And uh, so eventually I, I, once I found dry fasting and I was like, oh my God, like these rashes weren't going away with the, I thought it was only a matter of time, put in months. I was like doing whatever it took. And I, I literally did like eight to nine months of like ozone therapy on my face. You know, imagine going in public. I, I, I really practiced not giving a crap what people thought. So I was like, yeah, this is me. You know, here, give me my oranges and fruits and bananas. Here's the money, thanks. But like, I once I incorporated dry fasting, it started eating away at those rashes very uh, rigorously if that is the right word. Um, and it started like uh, just disappearing really fast. And I was like, oh my God, like this is it. I was like, thank God. Wow, like how do, how is that the answer? Doing nothing is the answer. You know, that's why I always say that in my, my Instagram stories, whenever it, like it appears to me, I was like, wow, God made it so easy that you literally have to do nothing. Can you do nothing? Like I, I had a hard time doing nothing. I still have clients being like, can I still take my medication and drive fast? Can I still take like these tinctures? I'm like, yeah, I'm like, I was the same way too. You're not grasping it. I'm like, do nothing, <laughs> do, do less than you, than you think. Um, Cause you're gonna, you're just gonna disturb the body's process. You putting anything, anything in your mouth pretty much translates to body, I don't trust you yet. Um, and that's how I kind of 
uh, that's how I kind of interpreted it. Um, so once I was able to trust the body, I was like, okay, now I'm going to do this for real. Because I was putting in these efforts, 11 days, 12 days, 13 days. And I was like, damn, is this all for nothing? And I realized if I'm going to do this right, I'm going to do this the right way. I'm really going to ab um, abstain from any and all things until I am able to get full resolution. So um, how, how these live streams usually work is I go through the comments. I'm very good at talking and like uh, seeing people's comments. So everything is seen. And I remember everyone's name, by the way, like Raw Grace Yoga. Um, you're an angel as well. <laughs> There's a lot of encouraging people, which I love. Um, and I don't mind haters at all either, either too, but haters, you better be ready to debate your points because uh, I'm not, I'm not like, I don't, I'm not scared of like letting all, all information in. You better have a good argument for what you're doing because I will take, I'll take your argument and steal it and claim it as my own if it's better than mine, but I, I'm, I'm, I'll, and, and that's, that's just pretty much the case. So I don't know. So I'll go through the comments and I'll pin the co the question and I will say it out loud. So the person who commented it, I'll say their name and I'll say the question and people can see what uh, what was what we're talking about. Plus, if I post this story live on my on my Instagram, you can, people can see it because they can't see the comments when I post it. So only you guys can see the comments. Um, what's up, tiny little gods from Ireland? By the way, good to see you. Um, cool name. Um, yeah. Okay, cool. I'm tempted to read the comments, but here's one. Why makes the how easy? Why makes the how easy? Okay, I kind of like that. I say I see a lot of white sediment in my urine. Remember, you said that we can store urine in the second day of the fast. What do you think? What do you do with it? And what is the sediment? Could you speak a little bit about this? Yeah. So the white sediment can be either one of two things. One, it can be very hard in mucus. So if you let the white sediment settle to the bottom. That's pretty much like lymphatic stagnation and also some people have like different mucus microorganisms and your body It's that shows you that it's literally in your blood So you're urinating your 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 blood is being filtered and you're urinating it out So it's filtered through the kidneys. So when that's happening, you can pee out the mucus that's actually existing in your blood Okay, so I, I already want to go on like a rant about that, but I'm gonna try to refrain from doing it um, so imagine that. So people who are very thirsty all the time, so that means they have a lot of mucus in their blood because the mucus is a microorganism, very microscopic life forms that want hydration. They'll take your hydration and do whatever they want with it. They'll start pretty much breeding inside that hydration and they'll take it. It's theirs now. That's why there can be misplaced liquid in some people. They can go to the head. It can go to like some parts of the body. They're like, why am I have stagnant liquid in my body? It's because sometimes it's it can be a staph type infection, staph type bacteria that's inhabiting that liquid. Anyway, so the white mucus can go out in the urine and that's what you do not want to re-drink though. Some people drink urine, of course, so like you don't want to drink this white liquid. So definitely throw that out. <laughs> um, and it can also be kidney sediment as well. So the kidney sediment is pretty much protein buildup, protein calcification. So you can have too much protein. I don't demonize protein. You can have too little protein, I've actually tried to do that and I just felt really, really healthy and I felt lean. I felt super lean, but my body wasn't able to build muscle and I, nor did it, I expect it to. Um, so, but I felt very clean. Like every single, my skin looked really good and my eyes looked really good. I was actively trying not to have protein at all. Um, sorry, so um, if you ever see my hand go up here, it's pretty much messages that I'm kind of clearing off the board. Um, so. Yeah, so you pretty much, you're experiencing your kidney de decalcify, so that's potential kidney stones that were brewing. And like, you can meet people in your daily life, be like, hey, I have kidney stones, my doctor has me in this, has me doing this, and I've met somebody today with kidney stones, I'm like, like, some people are not gonna be receptive to the dry fasting message, I'm like, all you gotta do is just do a five day dry fast, and then break it on baking soda and water, and you will um, decalcify your kidney stones, and you start peeing out the sediment, the sandy structure, the white structure you're seeing in your urine. Anyway. Um, so that's my take on that. Um, so I like keeping answers very simple so people can um, grasp it. I'm not trying to like, um, I'm not trying to like make things complicated. Reno Law, yeah. Um, Reno Law says you would love the book Man's Higher Consciousness. I do love the book Man's Higher Consciousness. I have it and I've recommended it to a couple people that it, it's kind of like one of those things that blows your mind and it also, uh, it also kind of is food for thought. So I think just like the Bible, like, <laughs> You, there's a lot of truth in there, but there's also some embellishments um, and some symbolism that need to be taken into consideration. So man's higher consciousness, it, it kind of lets you know like, man, how much information has actually been nurtured throughout the thousands of years? What have we kept true? You know, have you ever really thought about that? Like what is, 
what are we really harnessing? What, what truths are we kind of gathering as, a, as an ancestral, um, I don't know, revelations? So Heyman's higher truth kind of tells you like how little uh, we needed and we had a very good grasp on, on fasting, it seems like that. And uh, people understood how to get into these meditative states through abstinence. And they also knew how to live long periods of life through abstinence and like just moderation. And I think it came down to, uh, I think it came down to this, like air quality, obviously air quality is a huge thing. You can get hydration and, and nutrients from the air. And so I think all of us have microbes and parasites within us and they'll eat within you creating blood clots. So at the end of the day, people are dying from blood clots. Um, and it's kind of like one of those things I want to sit on the table and put a sign being like, people die from blood clots, prove me wrong. Because it's really hard to, um, to kind of say that that's not true. So how do you prevent blood clots? You prevent blood clots from having a very hydrative um, intake. So people who are like carnivore diets and like, yeah, I'm not hating carnivore diets, just know that I think that you're capping your, your longevity with it. You can feel very healthy temporarily. You'll build the body, you'll look very healthy and you're a man, congratulations, you're very masculine. But you're actually inhibiting blood flow. You're creating kidney stones. You're creating like uh, too many amino acids in the body. Um, but, but it's satiating, right? So meat is very satiating. So you're actually inducing a fast with it, whether you know it or not, because you're full. And now you don't have to eat for a long period of time. So you're getting the best of both worlds, fasting and amino acids. Um, I forget what I was even talking about. <laughs> um, so man's higher consciousness, yeah. So so this is the, the key to longevity is this. I think I'm gonna actually post this live stream because I, I feel good energy with you guys and, and I feel like uh, it's flowing really well so far. Um, is uh, the key to longevity is hydration, um, citrus juices to kind of like um, cut down on the biofilm in the body so you're helping the lymphatic stagnation. If you have lymph and you have lemons and you put them together, it's just gonna dissolve and it's easy to kind of pee and sweat out at that point. So I like putting lemon in all my uh, juices and water. And um, it's also doing like one really long fast. So you have to be able to build up to doing a real, one really long fast, water or dry. I don't hate on water fasting. And that's why you dissolve or kill off all the parasites or microbes that might be um, inhibiting circulation. So now your lungs and your brain is not, is not uh, hindered by mucus and your, your blood is very clean like glass and it's able to circulate very um, efficiently. And you're not gonna have blood clotting at 70 to 80 years old. So that's why doctors are like, hmm, when did your parents, grandparents, when did they die, 45? Okay, that means you're probably gonna die 45 too. I truly believe that the, that you kind of hand over the microbes that the other per that your mother and your grandmother have. So now you're dying from the blood clotting that the parasite gave you, that gave your mom and you gave your grandma. Um, I'm just saying it like it is. This is my interpretation of it right now. Um, and because they, they had the same allergies, right? So like there's some sectors of the world where like, for instance, I have a portion Ashkenazi Jew in, in me and they have a lot of allergies and a lot of my cousins and uncles have that and I don't have any of it, you know? It's because I am a crazy person that's gone a really long period of time fasting. And, uh, and I also have iodine supplementation. So that's another key to longevity, iodine supplementation. So I take at least 50 milligrams each morning and that cleans off your blood every single day and you dissolve the mucus that might be inhibiting your, your skin and your lungs and your reproductive system. So it's a great way to get pregnant as well, cleaning off your reproductive area with iodine supplementation, water fasting, and something called serapeptase. Serapeptase is a a synthetic version of caterpillars uh, creating mucus to dissolve their cocoon. So serapeptase can be bought in capsules. It's a very good enzyme that they use to get out of the cocoon and we can eat that and it dissolves any um, lymphatic blockages in the reproductive system. Iodine, citrus juices, serapeptase, pregnancy. That's how you, that's how you do it. Um, and I've coached uh, several people to, they, were, they wanted to get pregnant and and if you, even if you refer them to me, I'm just gonna say that information to them. So you might as well just give it to them yourself unless you want me to kind of uh, elaborate on it so they can trust like a third party. And some people need that. Um, so Milasad says, uh, this is interesting because I remember doing water fasting with Kangen water, aka too much too alkaline water, and it gave me a real rush to the water was too harsh for the body. Yeah, um, I completely agree. And we talked about that before and I feel like uh, Kangen water, it's, it's really close to the truth, but it's not the truth. You know, that's the whole thing about this world is people make things really, it seems a lot like truth, but you're very far from it. Um, and Kangen water is one of those things. Living structured water, so spring water that comes from the planet Earth, that's like, here we go, this is filtered from the Earth for you, all the minerals that the Earth has, because you are Earth. So why not drink the essence that you came from? So 
you're drinking the spring water and that's really hydrating for the body and your body does filters it even more within your body and dishes out minerals here and there and you're you're pretty much made of authentic mother earth so mutating it with like machinery like kangen water is not going to create a, a good chemical comp composition for the body to receive it just like how diabetes is formed put enough fake food in your body the and actually this is one of the things that i want to talk about uh, i'll say it very briefly but um so yeah um so so pretty much like diabetes is formed because like the your your cells are opening up to receive insulin opens up the gateways to the cell to receive um, nutrients that you gave to the body like glucose and stuff like that and once you put enough fake sugars so fake sugar tastes like real sugar right it's another it's another inversion and you uh you pretty much train your body to be like hey i'm putting nothing but fake things in my body so the insulin response is like okay that relationship to the pancreas and your uh to your cells is now it's disrupted and now you cannot uh you, you're, you're not going to receive it your cells are going to shut you down they're going to pretty much cold shoulder you until you get um, real food real real nutrition real hydration in the body and then they'll kind of come back out of hiding and be like oh, okay i guess they're putting real food in us again so like let's let's start opening the doors the insulin will have a, a have a, you have a more of a natural insulin response and you can expedite this process by going into your natural state aka fasting so you have a very you're, you become very insulin sensitive so now it'll take whatever so when you break the fast you want to make sure you break it on nothing but real living foods so that your body's like okay now we're back online now we can trust this human that we're serving um, and so that's how you create a more natural situation with uh, your insulin response and get off of diabetes so um, a lot of people will come to me about diabetes too and that is um, that, that's something you need to break the fast very um, cognitively and you you can't break it on like sugar or salt because of this reason because you can spike your insulin and the pancreas will be you put your insulin your pancreas will be shocked and you can actually create diabetes from fasting but you can also heal diabetes from fasting so the breaking the fast is very um, very important so D Biggs, D Biggs says um, some friends tell me that fasting puts your body into survival mode is this true yes and I commented on that earlier and I'm gonna post this uh, live so you'll be able to see my explanation on that lymphatic drains to the kidneys uh, lymphatic system it, it it's it drains through multiple detox pathways um, your excrement your kidneys filter through the lymph uh, and your lymph is also um, through perspiration too you can also breathe out lymph and the lymph also comes out through your mouth as well anywhere um, there's a detox pathway your body's in a um, discard lymph so especially the skin the skin is like probably 80 80 percent uh, of the detox channel for lymphatic stagnation um, and that's that uh, what about when someone is um, is dry fasting and having sex <laughs> yeah I actually is, had a client that said yesterday he was like can I masturbate and dry fast and I was like <laughs> uh, this is an interesting topic because can you masturbate and dry fast it's very tempting to uh, be sexually active and dry fast because your reproductive system is so clean you've awakened yourself sexually your root chakra is awakened now that's what that's what dry fasting does it cleans up all your chakras whether you believe in chakras or not your energy points so you become hypersensitive and then you have access to something you had never had access to before and that's why people are so fa obsessed with fasting because you're having accessibility to your chakras and I really feel bad for people who don't experience that in this physical existence because you never got to see your physical body awakened all your chakras light up you've won the game and right now um, not all my chakras are lit up I'm only on day two but they will be um, by day 11 day 12 and that's when I, I really take time to myself this is like my time I get off social media and I'm able to just like exist in in like the very anti-inflammatory state so all my energy points are, are on on online so to get back to the question um, can you have sex on dry fast yeah you you can and you'll be, it'll be very pleasurable around like day three to day five you know because you're cleaned off and you're like having very clean energy uh, intercourse so it's like you're it's it's definitely not gonna it's very self, a lot of self-love and fasting so you uh, you'll be able to give more pure energy to your partner um, but you also it, it, like the essence the most beautiful essence to your body not the most but one of the most is like actually the seed you, within the body so it takes a lot of energy to create that seed so your body's already cleaning itself and if the prior priority of you is to heal then why utilize that energy towards creating um, semen so like it, it takes a lot of uh, minerals and an effort to do that so you kind of want to like even boxers they know not to have um, sex before their matches because 
because you'll have weak legs, as they'll say. You, your legs will become very limber, um, and, you'll, and you'll feel like Gumby rather than kind of sure-footed. Um, this person says, what are some of the strategies you employ while fasting to reinvigorate your discipline to keep going? Um, to keep going, physical and mental strategies, thanks. So real Bradley J said this question. What are the strategies you employ to reinvigorate your discipline to keep going physical? So um, I, I sometimes I literally need to put a poster up in my house, like pretty much these are my reasons why I'm gonna keep going. Otherwise, I'll just break it. I'm like, oh my God, I just put 11, 12 days into this and I broke it. Like that was, that's literally, what is it? One third of a month times 12. Um, yeah, that's one thirty-sixth of a year you put into a fast, and now all for nothing, I guess. So having reminders is really good, even on your phone, in your room, um, to keep going until you reach your goal. And uh, f and I also have like these mantras that I do. Sometimes I'll just kind of like, I'll breathe in my nose, and I'll kind of just like, just chill out and be like, okay, I'm a person who chooses to fast. I have no wants, I have no desires. Stop having FOMO. My reasons are like, I have FOMO sometimes. One of my friends are having fun. I wanna have fun with them. You know, even today, I couldn't resist about having fun. It's day two and I still went on a boat, you know? And I'm still like socializing as well. But I'm very conscious now of how my energy channels are being used in these states. Cause I'm like, hmm, even when I eat food, sometimes I'm a little bit low energy and I have high energy when I'm, fa when I'm fasting. So I'm trying. I'm finding like this internal balance. That's where where I'm at in my life is finding a balance between intake and fasting, um, and where where can I have high energy all day long every day without stimulation of caffeine or, or chocolate or anything like that. Um, which I, I do like chocolate, but in very small portions now. I used to eat the whole damn bar every single time, no questions asked, because I was trained when I was a kid to eat a whole, whole bar. But now I just eat like maybe like one eighth of a bar. Um, so. So pretty much that, it's pretty much um, reminding yourself why you're doing it and reminding yourself like you are a person who's choosing this process so your physiology is on board with, your, with um, your pursuit of fasting. You're not trapped, you're not forced to do this, you're choosing to do this. And now find a, I, another thing I do is I like to, sunsets and sunrises are, are a great way to keep going. So you're kind of fasting for the sunset and sunrise. So those are your checkpoints, okay? and you breathe and have these mental um, gratitude points during the sunset and sunrises, and uh, you'll be able to go a little farther. And um, I think that was a great question. Thank you for the question. Um, okay, so yeah, I think, okay. I think, uh, okay, yeah, sometimes Instagram does this. It'll like jump forward. Um, it'll jump forward in the, in the post and I actually lose my place. Okay, cool, I found it. Um, yeah, here it is. Uh, you're better off drinking celery juice first. Okay, cool. Pman413 says, seeded watermelon, organic blueberries, and structured water. Yes, definitely agree. Any real, just like the diabetes thing, any real hydration, any real intake is better than having, definitely don't have chemically filtered water like Dasani. Be a, become a water snob. Um, and so you're, you're putting only real hydration. Just try that out, but only real hydration in your body. Just spring water with like lemon or like just juices and get and overdo it. You know, right now, right now I'm consciously dehydrating. You know, I'm doing this on purpose. And so you can um, you can consciously hydrate. When I'm not dry fasting, I'm probably hydrating more than anybody as well. So I, I <laughs> dehydrate more than anybody, and I also hydrate more than anybody. So like hydration is obviously youth. You can feel more. Your skin will clear up. You'll have no wrinkles if you have hydration, um, anti antioxidants within juices. Um, so yeah, it's nothing that you guys don't know. That's very basic. Thomas read one two one one two two one two one says, uh, "What number of day is it that you must meet?" most people heal when dry fasting. Um, Russian literature uh, says that you'll heal at day 11. Um, but for me, that didn't happen with any of my symptoms. I, I healed my liver in seven days. I healed my kidneys in five days. It all depends on what you're going for. That's why I know some things are very easy to heal. But for me, it really took me, um, it took me in double digits, I'll say that. But if you wanna heal something in particular, just DM me or book a consult within my link in my um, bio and I'll be able to expound upon that. I just don't want the legal um, implications from having this uh, posted on my public account. Uh, Reno Law says, uh, what are your thoughts on only eating on Monday, Thursday, and Saturday? Ooh, that's a good question. Um, other days, water and herbal teas. Yeah, so Reno Law, you seem like a person that's actually delved deep into this uh, breatharian or dry fasting um, uh, literature because you're kind of tapping into something that people have done. I think that, I really do think that that's like a, 
a more powerful version of what the church is trying to tell you to do. It's Sunday is a day of rest, right? The day of rest, what do you think that is? It's day of fasting one day a week. It's trying to tell you that your body is your temple so that you fast one day a week and you can preserve this temple and tune in to the God within yourself. And that was what I realized with this fasting. I accidentally found spirituality and I found the God within myself by day 12 as I was on the beach and I was like, oh my God, I've been praying externally this entire time. Yes, God is external, but he's also within you. Um, and I think that that's um, something that you should know. <laughs> and so when you only eat three days a week, you're kind of, um, you're pretty much annually living this really light form where you're going to feel very good no matter what you're eating. You can eat complete crap only three days a week. And if you, as long as you fast three or four days a week, it's hardcore. You're going to feel very light. Your body's going to get to a very healthy um, point where you're very alkaline and your body is very, your blood is very healthy. And you can pretty much heal whatever if you do that for like two or three years you can do you can heal whatever doing that um it, it's just really it takes a lot of discipline to do that because your family and friends are going to want to eat and drink with you um yeah <laughs> uh, high vibrational uh, collective says couple goals dry fasting sex while holding the seed yeah she hashtagged those so hopefully people can find this live stream through uh dry fasting sex uh, that's not the main topic here but um what are your, so renal loss is what are your thoughts on only eating? Okay, you already answered that. Um, Jakob Wenham says, uh, says, I notice it is good to hold on to the semen during fast and my body gets tired from re, re, uh, reloading the semen storages. Um, yeah, there you go. That's pretty much what I said before. Logan and, and uh, Anil says, do you eat animal, do you eat animal products at all? Do you drink caffeine? I don't drink caffeine. I'll drink caffeine as a, as a toy. Um, so that's kind of how I like to put it. Like if I'm on vacation, if I'm in Paris, I'm in like Italy, I'm in Amsterdam, Colorado, and someone on vacation, I'll have like a cup of coffee in the morning. And uh, I think it's just fun. It's a fun thing to kind of get jacked, but I will have to take a nap at 1 p.m. because my body wanted to get rid of the caffeine. So now I'm tired. So I had like a high high, not a low low. It's kind of like a child eating ice cream. They want that sugar and they crash, right? Um, so I don't drink coffee at all in my daily life. So I probably have probably about like six to eight cups of coffee a year. Um, do I eat any product products at all? Um, sometimes animal products sneak into my diet, but it's not a staple of my diet. If my, a staple of my diet is raw vegan, I like to stay in raw vegan. It's hydrating, but I know amino acids are very important, so I like to go towards very protein-rich uh, vegan sources if I can. Um, and I always like have a smoothie on board. I always have uh, just, like lentils and hummus and cucumber, avocados, these things I really love. Um, and because like I said, I was actively trying to eat as little protein as possible once, once upon a time. And it's hard to just kind of initiate that process and do it. It takes a lot of discipline, but you'll see that your skin actually does get really clean. Your eyes get clean. You feel very healthy. I'm telling you, like if you try to stay away from protein, like try it for as, as an experience um, experiment and you'll see that you're, you're going to be like, huh, maybe I was kind of lied to with, with this whole protein max out at like 150 grams a day. Um, so like, it's crazy to, to actively eat as little protein as possible and see what happens. So Pepe, um, Pepe, <laughs> what is his name? Okay, Peppa Pig Cousins says, my fatty liver makes it difficult to fast longer. How can I meditate through this? Okay, you, that's a great question as well. So last night I can tell my body, my liver was, was, was converting um, my glycogen into glucose. This is what happens on day two. I'm glad you brought it up. Day two, liver converts glycogen to glucose. So the majority of your glycogen stores are actually in your skeletal muscle. So all across your body, so it's easily accessible. What do you think hair is? Hair is easily accessible minerals as well. So glycogen stores are all over the body and it releases, um, your body goes into the muscle glycogen, but primarily the liver glycogen first. That's what initiates ketosis because once it depletes that, the body knows to engage in fat burning ketosis, your fat burning mode now, right? So um, when, you, when your fatty liver makes it difficult, when you're experiencing pain, like I experienced a little bit of pain in my liver last night, and it's because I knew my liver was processing glycogen. Just understand that your liver is like a lizard tail. Like if you cut that off, the, li the lizard is going to grow back that tail. Your, your liver is, will regenerate. It's very good at regenerating, and fasting is very good for it because it'll, it'll pretty much put it through a car wash. Like you're, you're depleting all the energy stores, um, all the glycogen and all the fat that's stored in your liver, and you're, you're making it young again. So now you can reintroduce um, more healthier options when you're actually in your daily intake and you'll feel, feel a lot better. So that's how you, you can cure a fatty liver very easily with dry fasting. Just make sure you get through a little bit of the pain. It's gonna be, it could, last, it could last 18 hours, but for me it usually lasts about like an hour and a half and uh, you'll be all good after that. 
Um, so like I said, like these live streams, they cut me off at an hour, so I only have so little time and I'm trying to pack as much information in as possible because I don't know if I'm ever, I only do these live streams when I'm fasting. Um, and I realized day two, I, I feel like they're the best um, where I'm kind of more firing in all cylinders. Today is day two. Are you not a fan of distilled water? Um, I like distilled water when I feel like I've had too much salt intake and then I use distilled water to pull on that salt and so I can urinate it out. Um, distilled water is, doesn't have any minerals, so think about it this way. If you're on a water fast, you can be dehydrated on a water fast. So this resonates a lot with me. I'm not sure if it resonates a lot with other people because whenever I say it, they don't have that aha moment like I, I do. When you fast, when you water fast, you can be dehydrated on water. What does that mean? It means your water has to have sustenance. It has to have minerals. Your body wants to pull from it. It'll keep making you thirsty until you give it that mineral intake. You know, so like you, after a dry fast, your, your tongue and your mouth will be very dry. And I love it because I'm like, yes, I get a second chance at heaven here because when you ingest juices, it's like, it's like a super heavenly process where you're just like, this tastes like orgasmic bliss to have anything after it. Imagine how, imagine high rehydrating again after a 20 day dry fast. I've done this a few times and it's just like, <laughs> you're like a loss of words. You're, you're way beyond crying and you're just kind of like, it's a moment just for you. You know, imagine going through 20 days. It's, I'm, I'm going to go an entire month on dry fasting. And like, it, you just have this like moment where you're just like, you can feel even your tongue, your tongue and your mouth is already trying to like absorb. That water doesn't even get down to your stomach because your, your body's like so, wants that so badly that it's just already hydrating in your, in your esophagus. <laughs> so it's just like, okay, well, I guess um, this is happening. So you really take it slow. So every single sip is just bliss. You know, you can, you can wean it on. Uh, you can elongate the process by just capping off like every hour. The key to breaking a fast, alarm clocks. Every hour, you're gonna have like six ounces to eight ounces of spring water. So that's no sugar, no salt. And then you transition the vegetable broth, then you transition the diluted juices, then you transition the juices, then you transition to, to fruits. And, and then you can have like a green cabbage smoothie, which uh, I used to put like green apples in it, you know, cause that'll instigate the, um, you, it'll put your intestines back online. It'll start digesting again. Um, I know I'm super behind on these questions, I'm sorry. Um, is fasting difficult for women than men? Uh, fasting is fasting's only a little bit diff different for, I find that women are like are arguably more mentally strong than men <laughs> because uh, the women that I've coached, they're able to go farther than men do. Um, they just have more uh, resolve um, at the moment. And sometimes they have like kids to take care of and they put food on the table and they're doing a dry fast. like damn that's hard like they have no one to give them like a, a trophy or an award for that but they're doing this while they're taking care of kids and this is a very common experience and uh so the menstruation um is what i can comment on that's the difference between women and men right so so like hmm, the best way to describe this is like menstruation is kind of like a shedding it's a detoxification unto itself and what do you think dry fasting is it's a detoxification so you can lose your period temporarily for one month but it's because your body's retaining that liquid. Um, it's, 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 you're already doing enough detoxification within the fast. So when people, like for women, I'm speaking to women now, is when you, when you have the menstruation coming, sometimes you crave salts, right? And you say you crave hydration because uh, I feel that through the hydration, you're gonna be able to create blood more, more for frequently. So you're discarding blood, hydration will create the blood. And the salts, your body's pretty much just asking for potassium. So just drink coconut water when you're craving, craving salts and because it has the potassium and the hydration and you'd be able to give the body exactly what it wants and um so you, with the because since your blood is getting thicker through menstruation processes you uh you want to create circulation so potassium is the vehicle for red blood cells to circulate more proficiently so give the body potassium give it hydration and then you can create blood and circulation at the same time um, so it's it's not really much different but it's good to know that they align i think um uh, can you can you tell us a bit about collecting your own spring water? Okay, um, so this person is uh, talking about. Can you tell us a little bit about collecting your own spring water and drinking it? I com I comment on um, Shivambu quite often, and I feel like I kind of <laughs> scare people off with the concept of Shivambu. Um, and I've talked about it so many times, so I'm gonna kind of skip it. Actually, I do want to talk about it, but like, I I think it's just it's kind of gross to a lot of people. Um, what what they're pretty much asking is like. Um, collecting my own urine and you would drink your own urine. It's, uh, it's uh, the, the most interesting thing I can say about that is that urine collects uh, stem cells, uric acid, and um, 
and ketones. So that's the beneficial properties of, of urine. But you will actually, in a toxic body, you're discarding toxicity. So it's not good to re-ingest the toxicity. You can put yourself in toxic shock, but you're also having beneficial properties to it as well. So fasting, I like. Juices, I like. You can you don't have to drink urine if you're doing those two things. Um, but also rubbing the urine in your skin can be beneficial. And the most beneficial thing that I can say about it is, is pretty much, um, I do speculate that when Jesus turned water into wine, sometimes I, I kind of like, like to humanize some of his miracles. Like obviously, uh, so day two to day five is the most uh, beneficial urine you're discarding. And so I think he was very, uh, very persuasive. I think he can persuade his disciples into saying like, hey, this is healing water. I fasted for 40 days. I'm a healing vessel. Um, drink of my flesh, you know, drink of my blood, right? He said that. What is urine? Urine is his blood filtr filtration, blood plasma. So it's kind of like these are all aligning to me and people are obsessed with Shabambu. Um, so I don't put that out of the equation that potentially Jesus made the disciple drink his urine. And they're like, yes, give me your urine. I would love to drink it. I mean, I've even had people ask to, to drink mine. I'm like, uh, no, thank you. Um, so I just like dry fasting. I like eating healthy and that. So that's what I have to say about that. There are Russian lady. There's a famous Russian lady famous for dry fasting. So this is what... In Nauru says, there's a famous Russian lady famous for dry fasting. She gains weight on dry fasting when exercising. I wonder what process is going on that she gains weight. The process that's going on when she gains weight when exercising is that she's eating food. <laughs> um, yeah, no, she's, some people, I have a hard time buying that. Like I've fasted, dry fasted for 20 days. I don't really know many people who can dry fast longer than 12 days. So seeing somebody who's done it, I mean like bravo, that uh, I think that I don't know, I, I, gaining weight and dry fasting just don't go hand in hand uh, unless you're like an authentic breatharian, no food, no water for sure. And you're like, you've trained your body to like go long periods of abstinence. So you're doing one day of eating every single week. Then you go to one day of eating every two weeks and you kind of let go of the range. You're like, okay, here we go. You're going to be skinny as heck. You're going to be a skeleton. And so gaining weight in that form, hmm. I, you know, like it's don't trust every single person that you hear, including myself. Don't trust me. Just like try these things out for yourself. Like experiment, you know, and go a little farther. And like tr just trust yourself. That's what this whole game is about, anyway. Who, who, who really authentically trusts anybody at all? <laughs> like it's hard to trust somebody 100%, but you can trust yourself. And uh, so I don't really trust a lot of people um, that claim all these things, especially um, people that are like saying that they've dry fasted for like, I don't know, 40 plus days. Like me dry fasting 20 days, I'm like, doubling this is just out of control. Um, so now I'm going to kind of skip through some of these questions. Benefits of 20 hours a day dry fasting. Intermittent fasting, everyone knows the benefits of intermittent fasting, uh, 7007 Solana, is you're pretty much just gonna allow your body to heal and detoxify more, um, uh, okay, detoxify more proficiently. So Amen one Eckel says, um, dry fasting could heal protein inflammation, a oh, prostate inflammation, especially bacterial one. So that's a good question. I'm gonna turn this light on so you guys can see me. Um, yeah, so prostate inflammation. So sometimes um, mucus microorganisms and parasites like to harbor in the prostate because they're preventing that, that human from, they wanna make sure that the, the semen is actually gonna go into the female and now it's, it's going to be into a new life. It's going to be able to, the parasites are that intelligent where they know they can take on a whole nother life and last another 80 years because they want to survive just like any human does. So they're going to be in the reproductive system um, for some of these parasites. Healing the prostate can be done through dry fasting, of course, and uh, it definitely will take down any inflammation that you're experiencing in the body at all. 100% dry fasting will, will, will take care of that. It's the most anti-inflammatory thing you can do. I've had like very solid lymph nodes that I didn't think dry fasting would take care of at all. It will take care of it. It'll go through any lymph node for sure, especially iodine supplementation as well. But um, you want to be able to every single day drink pineapple juice because you're going to have the enzymatic properties of the pineapple juice that are kind of uh, detoxifying your prostate. And you're going to see that you have um, a higher sperm count as well. That's what I'll say. I'm going to try to gun through these, gun through these, uh, um, these comments. So I'm waving to some of you guys. So. It's hard to kind of like answer. I have like, literally the amount of followers I have is literally perfect for an hour long live stream because I really cannot handle any more than that. Um, why do you have an article or anything about the kidney stones? Um, 
That's a great idea. So live beyond the evil, um, the veil is, uh, yeah. Um, yeah, I can send you some some articles on the, the kidney stones. Try to DM me, and if I don't respond within a week, I would just book a consult because my DMs are full and it's hard to, to get to everybody. Um, but yeah, that definitely works. Uh, kidneys are like, it's very easy to dissolve. That's the most kidney filter, filtering thing you can do is, is dry fasting. Um, but it seems like counterintuitive because why would I dry fast? That's not that bad for your kidneys. If you're if there's too much stagnation and your kidneys too much protein build up and your and your blood is too acidic, you're gonna experience kidney sensitivity and that is a time to break. But go back into a dry fast after that and you'll be able to go deeper and cure your kidneys more um, more deeply. Uh, so good to see you guys. Uh, ethereal, oh, I can't even pronounce the name. Uh, and okay, so thank you for this information. Okay, um, so Mila says, why do water fasters hate on dry fasters when dry fasters could care less about the water fasters? Yeah, it's easy to get emotional about um, like people hating on you. Like who cares? Like if you found your own <laughs> raw truth, you know, I just saw a name that says raw truth. If you found your own raw truth, then what does it matter what anybody thinks? I had a hard time grasping that when I was growing up. Like. Somebody would call me a name and I'd be like, Dad, they call me stupid. He's like, well, are you stupid? I'm like, no. He's like, so what does it matter? I'm like, oh, okay. But I wanted more explanation from him. He wouldn't give me any more, but it was just like, oh, why well, don't identify with their, with their analysis? They're kind of, everybody needs help. There's really low intellectual beings on the earth and there's high intellectual beings that are a little farther along. We can help each other to low intellectual beings up. <laughs> People that don't necessarily have, that haven't found the truth. It's just pretty much exposing truth. That's all this is. Um, just like dry fasting, you're, you're dissolving blockages, you're exposing more truth within your body, and you're going to be hypersensitive. I consider sensitivity to be intelligence. Um, so that's that's kind of the name of the game. And uh, I can't even pronounce this, this name. So it's uh, A A and Rhea says, um, oh, I guess she's Andrea. What, <laughs> what portion of women's cycle do you think is best to do a dry fast? Um, to be safe, uh, I would, uh, I would, I would dry fast. Um, I would dry fast during moon phases um, because then you have less uh, inflammation pull on the female body. Because obviously females and men can be very um, erratic during moon phases and moon cycles, and that's when like microbes and mucus can go to parts of the body that they weren't before. So the moon can be a detrimental thing. Um, but like that's why there's a there's a whole holiday called Ikadashi every single month. Um, there's 13 moon cycles and there's 13 ikadashis throughout the year and people definitely fast through ikadashis um, where it's a full moon because it has the biggest influence over the body you're being influenced externally you shouldn't have that so people fast during that point in time so I would just I would uh, I would prioritize kind of like uh, fasting during ikadashi look into it it's pretty interesting um, sorry no I meant collect water from the spring oh sorry Steph I misinterpreted your question um, she might collect water from the spring, but I'm down for you. <laughs> uh, you're the best. Stephanie Hathaway. Um, does does some... Uh, okay. She does some respiratory exercises. Okay, cool. Your mind would have to be super powerful to gain weight to dry fasting. Yeah, anything is possible. Um, I agree. Okay, cool. Um, oh, cool. So two people I'm friends with actually connected. Milasad and Higher Vibrational Collective. Um, you both are definitely friends in my life. You should, def you should definitely connect. You both have uh, very, very intellectual people um, that can talk about a lot of things, and you both have a lot to say. Limited, um, limited tree genetics says uh, after a fast. After a fast, how do you put so much weight back on, and how do you get such great shape on just fruit and vegetables? I always think when eating really clean. Um, yeah, so you have to really, I, I, I really prioritize protein intake one or two days a week, and I'm not like. You can do whatever you consider protein intake. Nothing is right or wrong. Okay, so I like to do hydrated foods, raw vegan, for a majority of the week, and then I'll kind of go uncooked and I'll do like more protein-rich foods. Um, so I'm always exercising. I'm always I'm hydrating like crazy. Uh, I drink like a gallon of spring water a day, and I have like 32 ounces of juice every single day. And I also don't drink during my meals. I have meals. I, I do fasted exercise every single day, and then I go into just enjoying my day, doing tasks and, and eating and drinking. I always have like a cooler of food. It's just like bliss. Um, so yeah, I, I I have decent like skeletal structure because my father was kind of like an athletic person. Um, and so I can build muscle um, pretty well. And um, I'm just a hardcore person. Like I work out harder than a lot of people I see at the gym, but I also rest, I rest hard too. You know, I, I prioritize sleep and I prioritize exercise. 
I'm just trying to fine tune um, the most healthy physical vessel that I can on this life. I want longevity, I want intellect, and I want like um, to feel strong. I want, I want everything. <laughs> um, so yeah, I do like um, raw vegan foods and I also like to have iodine supplementation as well. So I'm gonna try to go through, damn, I wish I can get through all these. What are you breaking your fast with? Okay, uh, um, tomorrow, Healing My Human says, uh, what are you breaking your fast with tomorrow? So I am breaking my fast with tomorrow. Since it's only two days, you can literally eat whatever you want, really. You can have anything you want. Like two days, it seems like a lot to your mind, but if you didn't do it in the best way, coconut water and, le and lemon is pretty much the best thing. So big jar of like real coconut water, lemon, you're gonna break down the biofilm, you're gonna rehydrate the body. It's gonna be a very cathartic, amazing experience. Try to limit yourself to like, I don't know, 10 ounces every single hour. Um, for like three hours and then you can have like any fruit you want um, and then you can go back to like raw vegan to the end of the day um, the later half of the day it's kind of easing in you're prioritizing hydration first and then you want to I'll do like a smoothie sometimes I'll do like uh, I'll do something to do mangoes um, it's just pretty much like fruits and it's like coconut water so lemon and coconut water is what I break short fast with um, yeah, and I, I like to kind of space it out so I can enjoy these things. If I just kind of feed it all at once, I, I'll stop enjoying it very quickly. And I want to keep enjoying something for 10, 12 hours. Also, the question is question. Okay, so I'm going to go into the question box. Thank you for reminding Healing My Human. And I'll be able to answer um, six questions in nine minutes. And then um, I'll be able, I'll be done with this, this thing. Okay, so luckily I got through all the questions in this live stream actually for the comments. So how long, do you, um, how long of a dry fast are you trying to do? So Raw Design Ella says how long of a dry fast. I'm just doing 48 hours and um, I'm pretty much going to um, stop then, but eventually I'm gonna do a 25 day dry fast at the end of the year. The retreat, like Melissa just mentioned, is in Guatemala. That'll be just five days and that'll be in December and I, there's no updates just yet, but uh, I, I keep having money come in and I'm like, um, I think a, there's a procession looming. So this could be like improperly timed. I'm still gonna book the, the retreat, but I think that there's gonna be some crazy things happening financially in the world this year. Um, a lot of systems are collapsing. It's like a domino effect pretty much because uh, raising interest rates kind of ruins uh, the, um, the overhead for a lot of businesses. And then they end up being, no, there's no profit intake for the, for the corporations and then they start imploding and then it's just kind of like a big mess um, and interest rates make houses uh, more unaffordable unaffordable as well it's just a whole bad thing obviously everything is everything's going to be very challenged it's like a, a detoxification of the financial system so i'm still going to do it in guatemala december five day dry fast and um and pretty much uh it's going to be like one day beforehand for cleaning the intestines and hydrating and two days afterwards just exploring the place and and kind of like communicating and, and enjoying the refeed and just uh, getting to know each other and just doing it all properly and coaching people along the biological process of it too. Um, it's gonna be in like a very um, amazing place in Lake Atitlan, Guatemala too. Plus like I'm, I'm inviting like all these uh, really high vibrational beings. So people are gonna be making like really deep connections. Anyway, high vibrational collective with the first question here, uh, which is do you have any before pictures of when you were rashed out before and after is a priceless. I do have pictures of that and that's gonna be in my book. I already finished my book. I'm just waiting for publication to finish their job and there's gonna be pictures in it of my tongue and my rashes of me rashing out and me healing it during the dry fast. You can see me losing weight as I was getting rashed out with the ozone therapy. So it's kind of like, it's just an authentic picture so people can kind of like put, um, put just like a picture to it and I'll have my journal entries. So it's like the whole thing. It's just complete vulnerability. Um, yeah, so it'll be in the book. Next question is Rebecca Thomas228 says, just joined, do you mind me asking how old you are and what age you found dry fasting? <laughs> yeah, so I have friends that found dry fasting at like 17 years old. I'm like, damn, like you're gonna be a force to reckon with um, if you kind of like delve into this a little more. But I am actually 36 years old um, and I, I try not to like say my age uh, because I don't really put numbers on it, um, but I'm just trying to like focus on just staying healthy and and whatever, wherever I'm at with my age is where I'm at. Um, so yeah, I found dry fasting when I was th um, 29. So I've been doing this for six years and I've been like obviously obsessed um, and going hard into it. So I've done like about over 50 dry fasts over um, 10 days. So I've kind of really challenged it and I, I think enough of, enough of a, a challenge to be able to speak on the matter. Um, 
And so I've even done crazy things. I've even done like 15 day, three day break, 15 day, three day break, 15 day, three day break. I've done four or 15 day fasts in a matter of um, two months. And, um, and it, it was very beneficial, um, but it's really hard to do. And that's something I definitely recommend supervision for. I also forgot to, get to say, forgot to say disclaimer <laughs> that none of this is uh, medical advice. None of this is health advice. This is just my own experience. Go to a medical practitioner for advice. Um, obviously I gotta say this on Instagram to protect myself because there's crazy people that can be jealous or, or do weird things. Um, the last, this next question is um, ideas to kill uh, parasites inside the brain. Yeah, um, dry fasting works really well. Iodine, nebulizing iodine. Um, very, very subtle ozone therapy, like through the, through, um, um, what is it called? A stethoscope. And you can even put like lightly up your nose. It's very hardcore and people wouldn't recommend this because this is like a very hardcore thing to do. I just do sometimes like subtle um, ozone therapy. And I also am able to, so this, this other question, Durda, Durda says, ideas to regain smell from COVID. It's the same question, ideas to kill parasites in the brain. So the sinuses are right here, right? So you lose your sense of smell and taste when parasites kind of accumulate right here. So nebulizing hydrogen peroxide, like a couple of drops of pro peroxide and like some distilled water in a nebulizer. A nebulizer is pretty much like steam. You put it to your face and you breathe it in and you, it covers your lungs and it covers your sinuses. So you're getting hydrogen peroxide or iodine in the nebulizer and it's able to kill off these parasites that are inhibiting um, COVID related symptoms and parasites within the brain. Okay, that's very, it's, it's a really good biohack. Nebulizing iodine, nebulizing hydrogen peroxide, look into it for sure. And you'll you'll have a higher IQ. Iodine literally raises your IQ because it's it's taking away mucus in the brain. That's that's uh, kind of causing inflammation and covering your brain. So it's 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 inhibiting your 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 processing. Um, so Jakob here, and there's I'm not sure how many questions. Three more questions in three minutes. I want to question enema. I have heard it is bad to do many times. That can remove lubrication liquid from your colon. Um, if you consider lubrication liquid to be mucus, um, there's a good way to do it you can just do lime and warm water a lemon and warm water and you, there's safe ways to do enemas you know you want to do enemas before you dry fast every single amazing um, fasting practitioner um, advises to do that including myself so and, and I definitely see a lot more benefits because you'll have nausea um, a lot of nausea and you'll want to like you'll be dry heaving during the fast if you don't clean out your intestines it's not a fun experience next question is steady jam good to see you philip uh hi trevor do you think we can get all the amino acids from plants i'm questioning human beings being vegan we we've uh we've been eating animal products for millions of years but veganism is a new concept essentially developed by eric yeah i think that there's no right or wrong answer to that philip i think that i think that uh like Animal products are a very protein dense material, so you're getting a lot of protein within a small object and you'll be able to have a lot of sustenance from it. So it's not wrong. It's it's possibly even more beneficial. Um, but you're you're eating life, you know, so you can look at it in a spiritual way or you can look at it as vanity versus spirituality, right? So you can go to you can do a balance. You can be a little vain and you can eat animal products, eat eat animals, and you can have high hydration and like get muscle building um uh, properties to the animal flesh and also hydrating properties to the fruits and have a good life but yeah it's this is your journey and it's a hard thing to answer because a lot of people are on a different journey so i have a minute and 50 seconds left um they're already like putting a clock on me this person is from a saint says smoking weed and dry fasting smoking weed is pretty much a dehydrating substance so your body just like coffee it tries to expedite the um it's trying to expel the caffeine. It's trying to expel the THC from your system. So that's why it takes two hours. You're high for two hours, right? You're caffeinated for two hours. That's how long it takes to eradicate from the system. So you get more dehydrated when you're dry fasting and you smoke weed. So try to abstain from that. But if you're doing a short fast, it probably wouldn't hurt. I'm not a fan at the moment. I used to smoke weed, but now I kind of don't. I like being sober. Um, can you speak on the slingshot fasting you did the heal? How many days? Okay. Um, yeah, I'm sorry. I almost got, I think I almost got to every single question. So this is the last thing I'm going to say. We're bouncing, um, okay. Okay, yeah, this is the last thing, sweet. Okay, cool. So this person says, uh, can you speak on the slingshot fasting you do to heal? How many days fasting and how many days to break and what did you consume during the breaks? Um, yeah, so this is a question by Healing My Human. I, I pretty much, the first fast, this is kind of how you do it. This is the Bible of dry fasting, pretty much. You do one fast to clear the body. You're not looking to heal the body completely with a with that first fast. You're looking to, to get rid of the acids. You're looking to get rid of the lymphatic stagnation. Things prevent you from going in a long period. You can take showers. You can go in the ocean. You brush your teeth during this fast. But you also want to 
skip and you want to you want to break for the amount of days you fasted so you broke you fast for 10 days you break for 10 days then you, you rehydrate off of raw vegan and, and coconut water all the products i've said before and then you're able to engage in a longer fast that's exactly what you do as long as you can supervise so you can get rid of the uh the intentional disease or ailment that's preventing you from enjoying your life experience anyway 15 seconds left love you guys it was an amazing um live stream probably my favorite one yet i'm definitely gonna post it so um yeah nothing but love for you guys and hopefully you have a great day and good luck to people going out to day three of the dry fast much love see you high vibrational collective hazna melissa all you guys love you